Hello, hello, hello YouTube. Welcome to Ambrose Landscaping YouTube channel. In this video, we are talking about the Toro 30 inch Turf Master. Uh, this has been a good mower for us. We have two of them. Um, we've had them for a little bit less than a year, but we've been we've put a lot of hours on them so far. And uh, so we're going to talk about the likes, dislikes about them, some things that you need to watch out for, even if you have the uh, X Mark 30, the commercial 30, uh, that also applies to it, and possibly even the uh, Time Master that you can buy from Home Depot. So go ahead and stay tuned and we'll go ahead and get started. So let's go ahead and talk about some of the pros for this mower now. It's been a good mower Like I said, we've had this one for a little less than a year. We have two of them and they've been good it's, They've been good mowers. They've had their problems uh, like I said uh, So let's go ahead and go with the pros Now one of the pros I like is that it does um, cut time Like almost by half uh, we usually use our Honda 21 inch mowers uh, but this mower has pretty much replaced it, and it's been really good. We use the Hondas every now and then, but um, I, I've really drawn close to this mower just because of how much time it saves me. It leaves a pretty good cut, and uh, it saves me a ton of time, especially from walking because we do have a lot of uh, push mowing jobs. All right, so another one of the things that we do like about the Toro Turfmaster, and there are a couple reasons why we chose the Turfmaster over the commercial 30X Mark. Now, one of the reasons is the uh, height adjustment for the wheels. Now, both the X-Mark and the Toro, both the rear wheels adjust the same by just pulling up on the levers. But the front wheels are a little bit different. Now, for the Toro, it's just a simple uh, lever that you just pull and it lifts both wheels up at the same time. Where the X-Mark, you actually have to pull up on a tab, tab, you remove each wheel separately, and then you have to insert it uh, again. So it kind of saves a little bit of time, not that much. Uh, but that was one of the things that I did like about the Toro Turfmaster. Now, one of the reasons why I chose the Toro over the X-Mark was because of the engagement lever. Now, this is the lever that uh, engages the wheels to go forward, of course, and to also engage the blades. Now, the one thing I did like about the Toro was that it only had one lever. And all you simply could do is grab the lever, move it over to the right to engage the blades, and then pull up. It's very easy on your hands, and it's a lot, it fits a lot smoother because it kind of, the lever um, kind of glides with your fingers. And so it's, it's just a nice smooth bar. Where the X mark, it requires two levers, one on top and then of course one on the bottom. And like I said, if you're used to it, that's, com that's completely fine. This is what I found that fits uh, me a little bit better. And one of the reasons why I bought it was it's just a lot smoother. It's a lot easier on my hands just to move one lever up and down from down below rather than uh, to hold one on top for the blade engagement and then the bottom one for the wheels, of course. Now, another one of the things I do like about the Toro is how easy it is to take off and on the side discharge plate and also the chute and the guard uh, for the mower. A very simple, all you do is easily uh, lift up on the tab and then just slip it out and of course you can just slip it back on. Uh, very simple, very easy and effective. I usually used to bag everything but since it's been pretty dry recently we've been uh, side discharging a lot of that stuff. And so there is a plug that actually comes with the, uh, the Toro where you of course slide in back where the, the side discharge is, or I'm sorry, the rear discharge into the bag and you just slide something in there and it kind of blocks it up. Um, and so that comes with the mower as well. Now one thing I do love about the Toro, more of the Kawasaki engine, is how easily it starts. This thing, one pull every single time, if anything, two pulls max. And I'll go ahead and demonstrate with you, uh, for you guys real quick. All the way to clutch. Every single time, like I said, it's either um, one or two pulls, but really it's always one pull. It's been a good mower. So very simple to start. All right, so next we're gonna talk about fuel capacity. So this is a one gallon tank. 
and to me that's pretty good um, there's been plenty of times where I've gone to jobs I feel up uh, every single day before we use them and it lasts me all day I can't remember how many times I had to stop in the middle to refuel because my Honda's I had, to, I had to do that all the time but this one it does really good on gas uh, like I said it has, a, it has a gallon tank so it lasts a long time I'm really happy with I'm just really happy with it I love the look of the engine I'm a huge Kawasaki guy so all right so now we're going to talk about some of the dislikes now sadly there is actually a lot on this list uh, just because since the Toro 30 and even the X mark they're fairly new to the market they've been out for a couple years at what like two three years or so and they have had their problems now I have had my problems with these mowers so let's go ahead and get started now one of the things I notice on my Toros is that the wheels easily the tread just it's just gone and um, it's kind of funny how most you know these wheels spend most of their lives on grass and how you know how much um, how far gone they are it's just it's just crazy and so um, I think the wheels are actually pretty expensive I'm not sure exactly what the price is on them but it's just kind of funny how fast the tread wears on these things now one of the recalls that Toro actually had on one of their motors which I actually had a problem with this one is that the blades can actually break off in the middle of um, operation and this actually happened to me twice the first time it happened to me luckily I was just um, in an open field grass just cutting and I, all I did was lift up the mower a little bit and the blade actually broke broke right in half and I was like okay this is kind of strange and I didn't think anything of it and I saw the recall um, but I thought it was a recall on the blades they weren't actually specific on the internet what it was actually for so about a week or two later I bought a new set of blades and I was at uh, one of my condo associations and what happened was that I was mowing and I started hearing this really bad vibration and a noise from underneath the deck and I lifted up the mower to turn because uh, I was finishing one of my lines and the blade actually swung and it actually flew at about 20 feet it hit um, part of the building about six feet high on uh, one of the side panelings and actually cracked the side paneling and it was about a few inches away from actually hitting a window luckily there was no one out around me because that easily would have hurt someone and so I realized that this was a little bit bigger of a problem than it really was so I actually called Toro right away and I uh, called the recall hotline or whatever you want to call them and I talked to a lady and I told her exactly what happened and she said okay you need to get to a dealer and I told her I said well how are you guys going to replace you know the side paneling on this building oh well we'll put your name down we'll put the address to the building and we'll get back to you well it's been well over you know six seven months and I haven't heard a single thing back from them so it just kind of shows what kind of service Toro has so I'm not really happy about that at all so now the problem with that, the reason why the blades were actually breaking, what was happening was I guess there was some kind of washer on one of the spindles underneath that would either come loose. And what was happening was that when it started coming loose, uh, the vibration from the blade just created it or uh, made it just snap right in half, which is kind of funny. And we have a couple pictures of it. And um, like I said, luckily no one got hurt. So if you do have a Toro and you have not taken it into the shop because of the recall I would definitely uh, urge you to do that soon because you don't want to have that happen to you so luckily uh, with the blades um, Toro did replace um, the blades brand new set of blades took it into the sh a local shop and they fixed it all for free I think the only thing we had to pay for was they paid for one blade we had to buy the another set we had to pay for the other one and then there were some bolts or something like that that we had to pay for. We actually wound up paying about 50 bucks when it would have cost, I think, a couple hundred or a few hundred dollars. So they put a brand new spindle on it, they put brand new blades, and they fixed the problem. Now, um, ever since they fixed it, another problem that we've been having is that we hear this really bad ticking noise. And I asked the dealer shop mechanic about that. I said, hey, it's making this really bad ticking noise when I, and it happens when you engage um, the transmission when you start going and he says that that's possibly from one of the pulleys and usually it, it indicates that maybe the belt's too tight and he says after a while that belt should loosen up and it's not as bad well we've been running them quite a lot and it still makes this annoying ticky noise I think it's maybe summer down a little bit but it's still pretty loud to where um, I get customers 
coming up in, in clients and they tell me, hey, that's kind of annoying. And I said, yes, trust me, I know. I don't really hear it as much because, of course, I listen to music when I work, but um, anywhere, anyone else standing around can easily hear it. You can even hear it in one of our videos that we have. Now, this is probably one of the biggest problems, and everyone knows, anyone in the landscape industry knows this, is the transmission problem. Now, the older generation, you know, when the, the Toro and the Xbox first came out, those transmissions, they recalled all of those, and they supposedly fixed the problem. Well, not really. They kind of did, but what happens was when I first bought this mower, it almost was impossible to go up any slight hill. Like, it was really pathetic. It was just, I, I couldn't believe it. But luckily what I found out, and I have a video on this, is all we did was take a zip tie and we zip tied it to the cable that connects to the transmission from the lever. And all that pretty much did was it just opened up that transmission because you're pulling more of the cable out to where it created, it, it had more, the transmission was opening a little bit more to where uh, you can go a little bit faster. Now this does fix the problem. At first, you'll notice that uh, when you engage the blades and you pull all the way up, um, really your hands more comfortable when it's close to the bar because you're not your hands more like this where when you put on the um, the zip tie your hands a little bit more open and so it kind of your hand starts to cramp up and it gets sore after a while so I would um, really urge you guys to use the smaller zip ties because you don't really need the big one you just need the small one you just need to open up a little bit more now that's the quick easy fix Another fix that you can do is easily just go into your Toro Xmark dealer, have them tighten up the cable to where it's, like I said, the transmission's opening up a little bit more, and it will actually fix that problem. Now, this mower will go up pretty steep hills. It doesn't do as good as the Honda's, but it does go up a lot easier than it did before. Now, here's another thing to keep in mind. If your serial number has 22200, that's the new generation uh, Toro. I don't know if it's the same for the Xmark, but for the Toro, if it has those numbers, um, then those are the new versions of the Toro Turf Masters that came out. So those are actually the good ones. So if it has another number, the older ones, those are the ones you really want to watch out for because those are the ones that have a lot of the really bad transmission problems. This one, like I said, they kind of fix it, but not really. But it's a lot better than the older ones that came out. Now this is another problem that I found. It's actually not just with the Toro. It's actually possibly even the X Mark. And what it actually is is the Kawasaki engine. Now a lot of your dealers, I'm not sure if they told you, but luckily one of my dealers told me this and this is something I think everyone really wants to watch out for and this is actually why I made the video. Now surprisingly, the air filter for the Kawasaki, if you take that off, uh, of course you have your air, air filter. Down below you have this padding underneath it and, oops, sorry, you have this padding underneath it. Now this is the problem. And this is why I made, I pretty much made this video. Now, my dealer told me that Kawasaki and I believe Toro and Xmark are aware of the problem, but they're not going to fix it. And what happens is, um, I'm not sure what you would call this material, but pretty much this foam, let's just call it the foam. From the vibration of the mower in the engine, what will happen is you can kind of even see it. I hope you guys can see this. It's kind of starting to peel off. As you can see, it's, it's just really cheaply made. And um, so yeah, it's just really cheaply made. Now this is the one of the things you have to watch out for. So Kawasaki is very aware of this problem, but they're not gonna recall the engine. So this is something you guys all need to watch out for. Is that what happens is that from the vibration, this stuff starts to peel off and it gets stuck into your carburetor and your engine. After a while, it will clog up and it can either damage the engine or you have to take it into the shop and get it fixed. Um, so the best way to do it is to buy a brand new filter. So like I said, if you have the original engine or the air filter like this um, on either the older models or even the newer ones, I would really watch out for that because like I said, you can easily see that this is starting to, it just, it peels off really easily. It's very, it's very cheaply made and that will start getting gunked up into your carburetor and possibly your engine and it will damage it and Kawasaki will actually not cover it even in the warranty. I don't believe that they will. If they do, I really hope they do, but I don't believe they will from what uh, my dealer told me. So that's something that you guys really need to take a look at is your guys' air filter. 
All right, now that we talked about everything on top of the mower, let's talk underneath because that's where a lot of the things happen. So, I'm gonna lift this up. Now, here's the bottom of my mower. As you can see, it clumps up pretty bad. And the grass, this grass actually was not so, uh, it wasn't that bad. Um, but as you can see right here, uh, if I can show you, uh, it clumps up right here in the middle. Actually, right here where the chute is. And all the way around. So what happens is that after a while, this is of course just like every other mower, but it starts to build up to where it doesn't, the grass isn't really getting sucked up. It's actually just getting folded over and it clogs very easily. Now that's really thick, wet grass. Dry grass, this thing does amazing. Uh, but like I said, as you can see right here in the middle, um, it's, it's pretty thick. I'm not gonna, I'll just grab some of it. But you can see just right there alone, just a handful. Um, and there's still probably about another inch or so above that. So I can, I can easily just grab a whole bucket full of this stuff. But as you can see, it, there's just, there's so much that gets clumped up. And so that's one thing I don't like, uh, about this mower, especially when, like I said, it's really wet grass and it gets pretty clumped up. Now, another thing I wanted to talk about are these guards right here. I'm not sure if the X mark has it, but of course, duh, the Toro does. And so these guards right here are, of course, supposed to help um, protect the deck. But this is the problem I have is when, um, when the wheels are aligned on top of the grass, at the edge of the grass, and this is hanging over. So let's just say this, this right here is the edge of the grass, and this is all cement. This is the sidewalk. So this little bit's hanging over. Now what happens is that when you hit a certain spot, if the ground is lower than the cement, this will actually scratch along the cement and it makes marks. So if there's anything I hate probably the most out of this whole entire mower, it's this thing right here. It is so annoying. Um, as you can see it, as you can see it, it is seriously annoying. All I do is it, you'll be going, going, going. You'll, you'll hit this on the cement and it stops you. And so then you have to lift it up and go around it. And it's just, it's so annoying. I cannot stand those. So that's probably one of the biggest things I have to complain about this mower. Um, like I said, other than that, it clumps up pretty good during wet grass, but then again, a lot of mowers do. All right, so the next thing we're gonna talk about is the bag. Now, this bag's pretty good, and so I'm comparing this to my Honda. And I love my Honda bags. The reason why, especially the Honda Commercial HLRC 216, that thing is just amazing. It has a really good handle where you have good grasp on it. Now this is probably the one of the biggest things I hate about these bags is that on the Honda, um, as you can see, the Toro ends right here, but the Honda actually goes up and it connects right here. It's a smaller opening, but what happens is that when I'm carrying this like this uh, to my truck to go and dump it, if this thing's completely full, I have grass clippings that start falling right down my shirt and it gets really annoying really fast. And that's how I used to do it with my Hondas and that's why I love my Hondas. So now I'm having to carry it down on my side like this, um, and I'm having to hold it open like this and tilt it back. Now it's not as bad, but like I said, if, if you have a long distance to go, after a while your hand gets really tired holding it like this, especially if it's wet grass, that's the worst. So I usually like to hold it up like this just because you have a little bit more strength right here. But like I said, if it's pretty overflown and you're walking, it starts kind of dripping down your shirt and it just makes a mess. So that's probably one of the biggest things I hate about this bag. Other than that, Holds a lot of grass. I think apparently it holds more than the Hondas, which is hard to believe because those Hondas hold a lot. I love my Hondas. Hondas are good, but um, the Toro has been pretty good on us besides all the problems I just listed, so. All right, so here we are at the end. So overall, of course, I listed a lot of um, cons to this mower. I do really love this mower. It's pretty much replaced our Hondas and I'm a huge Honda fan. I love my Hondas. Uh, it has replaced them. We use our Hondas every now and then, just depending on uh, if it's really thick, tall grass, I'll take my Honda than this thing any day. But this thing, in the end of the day, at the end of the day, saves us a lot of time, does give us a good cut when it's pretty dry grass. Even when it's a little damp, it still does really good. And we get our jobs done faster, and I'm really happy about that. Uh, since I fixed the transmission problem, it's been really simple on us, even though it makes an annoying noise, the annoying noise during operation. Um, but like I said, I don't hear it. Um, but other than that, it's, it's been a really good mower. I'm really happy with it. Uh, would I recommend this one over the X mark? 
from what I heard, a lot of guys go more X Mark than Toros. So yes, I would actually recommend the X Mark. I haven't used it yet. I played with it a little bit at one of the dealers. I kind of held it in my hands and stuff like that. And like I said, besides the handles, the handles just, it didn't feel right in my hand just because I'm so used to this. And that's the problem is that I'm so used to this, it's hard to compare to the X Mark. Um, but I would recommend the X Mark. X Mark has, has a great name. Um, and so that's probably, that's one thing I'm going to talk about. What is the difference between X Mark and Toro? Really, they are exactly the same. Now, you're going to hear this all over the forums, you're going to hear this all over Instagram, and everyone knows this. Toro owns X Mark, okay? So I'll just say it right now. Now, this is the difference between Toro and X Mark. X Mark is a higher quality grade uh, of mowers and tools than Toro. The best way to look at it is that Ford is a Toro and then the X Mark is Lincoln. Now, if you look at Fords and Lincolns, they look exactly the same, but what does Lincoln have? It just has a little bit more chrome around it, a little bit more higher quality. Now, it's the same thing with Chevy and GMC. Now, GMC is the X Mark and Chevy is the Toro, where it has all the bells and whistles and it looks a little bit nicer. So that's where it's at with this. Toro is kind of like just the basic stuff. And then the X Mark is the higher quality. They put all the really nice bells and whistles on it, and it does do a lot more. So I would actually recommend the X Mark over the Toro for that reason, just because it is built a little bit better, and they just sell a lot more since Toro doesn't really have a good name. Now the higher quality Toro stuff, they're really good. I, I used to have a Toro Zero Turn. I had a 44 inch, and that was a good mower. I had a lot of problems with it, but then again, it was 11 years old, had a lot of hours on it. Um, but I would never go back to a Toro. Now, if you have one, that's completely fine. Um, but if anything, I would probably make the switch over to the X Mark. It's a it's a really good mower. So I'll probably last with these Toros for a little bit longer. Then maybe I'll switch over to an X Mark. But as of right now, I'm I'm pretty happy with them. So I'm just gonna go ahead and stick them out. So so I really hope this guy this helped you guys, especially that air filter. Like I said, I don't think there's any videos that talk about that. And luckily, my dealer told me about that. So really take a look at your air filter. If you see the bottom foam underneath your air filter starting to peel off, time to get a new air filter because that's just gonna all get gunked up uh, into your engine. So I hope this worked. Subscribe, uh, like, stay tuned. We'll post some more videos. We'll post some really cool videos of us using the Toro. Uh, that way you guys kind of get a little idea. And I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. I, I really hope it helped you choose whether or not to choose between the X-Monk, the to Toro, or the other Toro, Time Master. So thank you so much. I'll see you guys next time on Ambrose Landscaping.